Welcome friends. Greetings from Chiang Mai, Thailand. I am Shobha Shukla from CNS in conversation with Jerome Pons, Head of Cooperation at the European Union for Malaysia and Thailand. We interviewed Jerome at a special meeting hosted by the Helpage East Asia Pacific Regional Office in Chiang Mai, focusing on a special multi-country project in Southeast Asia during 2013 to 2017 on aging related issues. Aging is an issue which is very close to my heart. Asian populations are aging and we need to ensure that older people lead a dignified, secure, productive and healthy life. Let us hear more from Jerome Pons of the European Union on key learnings of this project on aging issues. The European Union is a very solid and integrated grouping of countries. We have developed ways of doing it. We have integrated in different sectors from economic development, social development, environment. A number of fields have been covered and what we're trying to do is basically um, promote similar integration in the ASEAN and basically uh, make available to them the experience we have been developing in the EU. The positive experience as well as the negative. There has been some setback, there has been some difficulties and we think it's useful for any grouping of countries willing to integrate to see what we have done, where we have been successful and where we have failed so that they can make use of some of those lessons to uh, deepen the relationship. Why is the aging population in Southeast Asia an issue of concern for the European Union? The, the issue of aging is a concern for the European Union. And, and that is true because uh, this is a change in the demographics of our society. This is happening in the EU and clearly we have to pay attention to that. Uh, from an economic point of view, as you, as you can imagine, having aging population means you have to generate more funds to pay more pension on a growing number of people while at the same time proportionally you have less people going to work and that makes uh, a, a big uh, issue in terms of revenue in terms of income and therefore we have to plan for it just to give you a personal example when i was studying 30 years ago Asia was seen as a, a very large part of the world with young and strong population ready to go to work. Today, when you come to Thailand in particular, everybody, government people, civil society organization will tell you, well, today the situation has changed and aging is now something we cannot ignore and we have to adapt to these demographic changes. And this is, uh, I'm taking Thailand as, a, as an example because I live and work here, but in the ASEAN you have a similar trend in all the countries and therefore because we are facing the same issue in the EU, we are trying to assist uh, the region with our experience in the matter and, and so that they can deal with this situation the best they can. Can you share with us the main outcomes of this project? I think this project has been successful. We are only the partner to this project. Those who have been successful are the implementers. It is HelpAge and it is the five uh, national organizations that have been supporting the implementation in their respective countries. Uh, so from that point of view, they are really the, they are the success story behind that. We have been facilitating their work. Uh, one of the aspects was indeed the networking and uh, uh, networking is, is putting people in a network so that they can share their experience, they can share their lessons learned, they can share what works, what did not work at the level of their program at the level of their society and basically try to come out with suggestions as to how to deal with, with issues in their respective countries. Um, it, it is The program has simply been able to help those people to be put together in the same room and discuss. Of course, um, HelpAge, which is the main implementing partner, has been able to guide a little bit this process and provide the venue for the meeting but also provide the areas 
that could be conducive for a better discussion. So it's a managed process, but it's a process that has been successful only and mainly because the partners have been efficient at uh, doing it and see uh, an interest in developing this network. And, and it's, one of the, it's one of the sustainable delivery of this program because those networks now, they've been created to be honest, they don't need us anymore to continue. And those people you have seen in the room, they will continue meeting, they will continue talking. They don't even have to travel as much as they did in the past. You can Skype, you can uh, network uh, on, on the web, and that will work really fine. So this is one of a, uh, one of a key achievement in terms of building the capacities of those organizations. But, but you, I mean, you know, the project has been doing much more than that, and notably they have been supporting uh, the change in legislation in a number of countries. And when I say legislation, it's broader. It can be legislation, but it can be also uh, uh, implementation instruction for the administration, for example, to, to implement uh, uh, the pension the pension system a and those are essential uh, elements um, those policies are developed uh, by countries uh, they are approved by Parliament they are implemented by government and it is essential that there is a feedback loop and that people that sees the implementation can have a can comment on the implementation and provide basically recommendation as to how things can be made better. And this is this is what the group has been doing here by providing either uh, input for brand new legislation in Myanmar, for example, or a revision of the legislation because the legislation is there and uh, it has good elements. It has elements that maybe are less good and need to be improved, like it was mentioned before in Cambodia, where revision has been uh, promoted through exchange of experience and uh, partnering with government, civil society organization and experts to come up with something that will work better for, for the population. Um, maybe the third example would be in the Philippines where work has been done to improve on the pension uh, system. And you know, it may not be uh, a legal aspect, but it is an essential aspect because it's how you, you provide enough resources for all people to, 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 to live and, and to survive basically. So th those are key elements. And also, I think in uh, Vietnam also, they have passed an order for increasing the number of clubs there. Absolutely, the yes, yes, yes. Which is which is uh, uh, which is a fundamental element because you do have uh, with aging population, you do have also uh, increasing isolation of the people, particularly people living in urban areas, which, as you know, is a growing trend. It's it's a, it's a growing trend everywhere in in the EU. Most people are now living in cities. In Asia, it is the same. The, the, the proliferation of the large cities makes that all the people live in big cities where they are not necessarily uh, related to their neighbors, even to their family at times, and therefore isolation is an issue. By trying to create those clubs like, like they did in Vietnam, they make sure that those people are aware that there are other people in the same situation and then they can basically uh, uh, make uh, their voice heard uh, you know by by whoever is developing the policy slash implementing the policies now as this project is coming to an end it is wrapping up what according to you what work still remains to be done well i think it's uh, it's there is no specific areas that uh, would uh, fit everybody. It's not uh, one size fit all. Uh, all countries face different issues. There are different degree of uh, aging, uh, I would say aging issues. But again, as I mentioned before, aging population is also an opportunity. So we should not forget that. But every country is at different level. And so they will have to come up with their own uh, solution to their own problem. But this is what we are trying to promote as well by having different organization working in different countries that will take the issues that are relevant to them. And I think this is the most important message that we should take away from, from this type of, uh, of gathering. It's, it's, for their, it's for their own people to deal with their own issues and we simply help them by putting 
a little bit of capacity there so that they can engage. They can engage with their authorities, with their parliament, to try to make them change and for their life to, to, be, to be better at the end of the day. But those issues are gradually changing. I mean, you, you, you do have to face the consequences of aging. There's no way you can go around that. And every country will have to face that uh, on its own terms. We have the SDGs which are which have come into force. So, what opportunities does this the 2030 agenda present to engage governments more meaningfully on aging related issues? What the uh, agenda 2030 offer is an opportunity to engage with the government on development matters, all of them, because the government are committed to that, and they have, and a number of them uh, are setting up systems to implement their SDG commitment and to monitor those SDG commitment. Thailand is, is a case at point, Malaysia as well, number of countries in the region are, are promoting this. It's fairly new. Eh? It is signed since 2015, so it will take a little bit of time. But I think uh, it is important because you have one common goal that all governments have agreed. They will set up specific goals for their own countries on specific matters. And uh, uh, it will be an opportunity for uh, aging population and, and NGOs supporting aging population to engage on specific issues you want to deal with um, SDG 1 on poverty reduction you know your country you know your government will set specific targets you come into the discussion and you say well it's all very good to have target for the population in general but please pay attention to the older people because well, if you have less economic resources because you don't work and you are more isolated because your family has gone somewhere else and gone to work, you are faced with poverty issue much more than anybody else. And therefore, let's fine tune that. Uh, this is why before I mentioned something which is very small, which is about statistics. It's very important that data be available so that the case of old people can be made and come turned into new policies that will that will not favor the old people that will but that will be equitable to everybody including old people so they should not be forgotten a and uh, the same with uh, i would say the same with uh, violence sdg 16 violence uh, we often talk about violence against women um, it is true and this is something we're trying to tackle as well but you do have increasing issues with violence against old people simply because they are easy target for crooks and uh, and 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 violent people uh, you have more issues with that and this is something that our government should deal with so that gives that gives entry point uh, sdg and the 2030 agenda gives entry point for uh, ngos to address their issues specifically on a more personal note what, according to you, is old age? Personally, I think it's from the moment you stop engaging with the rest of your society. Mm -hmm. It's probably what uh, the definition of old age mm -hmm. for me. And I hope this is uh, as far away as it is and as it can be. So it will be different for different people. It possibly. will probably be different for different people, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, it's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> One more question. If, uh, are there specific issues to for female senior citizens which uh, perhaps they face more or they have to deal with more mm -hmm. rather than <laughs> well uh, y y i mean uh, i think all people male and female all face difficulties uh, but female uh, are, um, the life expectancy of, of women is just longer than men so they will face that with more uh, longer and of course more uh, hardship at the end of the day so this is and this is something that has to be addressed as well um, in many countries I mean it's it's about the rights of the women uh, which should be defended even more than before you know the right to inherit uh, the right to take over from the husband as opposed to having uh, the husband wealth going to the, the children which used to be a standard approach well now you do have a, a big difference between uh, men and, and women life expectancy I mean in some countries in Europe you, you reach uh, five six seven years 
statistically it is significant and so you have to deal with that and you have to make sure that women are given the same rights so that whenever their husband pass away uh, they can continue uh, they can continue their, their life until until the natural end so those type of uh, of uh, changes are affecting women much much more than men definitely so it it is a specific concern indeed well uh, as i mentioned for for us sdg is fundamental um, and and even uh, as myself as a development partner it's fundamental for the countries I work with, but as you know, SDG is a commitment as well back in our developed countries where donors are coming from. So this is important on those two aspects. Um, the review process uh, is essential and uh, the European uh, Union has actually committed to assist countries in implementing, but also to put a focus on monitoring. And this is what the review is about. It's basically to sit and take stock of the progress. And as you mentioned before, it is very easy to uh, agree on commitments and then do nothing about it. So the review, the monitoring, which we as the EU really want to support and, and are already supporting in a number of countries, including in Thailand, where we're trying to assist the government in its efforts to set up systems to monitor. Um, is an essential element, element of that. I mean, without that, it will be just again, uh, you know, public statement and, uh, and uh, principles, you know, leap of faith. But what we want is that we go beyond that and we demonstrate and things that progress, let's say it high and, high and loud. And if it's not progressing, let's say it as well and try to address that and get it better. You need data, you need review, you need uh, an inclusive process to get information from all walks of life again as we discussed before networking of NGOs to provide input to that and um, and uh, end up with an assessment that is uh, acceptable to all governments international organizations civil society the public at large so that we can all agree on on priorities for the next uh, five years ten years and progress toward that We were listening to Jerome Pons, Head of Cooperation at the European Union for Malaysia and Thailand. Thanks to Helpage East Asia Pacific Regional Office team for facilitating this interview for CNS. For more details, be welcome to check our website www.citizen-news.org or follow us on Twitter at CNS underscore health. Thanks for listening and stay tuned.